Welcome to Talk Local, a 10-part Zoomcast series presented in partnership by the Swift Current and District Chamber of Commerce and the City of Swift Current. Each day for 10 business days, we'll be talking to someone from the Swift Current business community about their business. Today, I'd like to introduce you to Amy Tinning, owner of Swift Shoe. Welcome, Amy. Thanks, Lindsay. So to get us started today, can you tell us a little bit about your business? Yeah, so I am the owner of Swift Shoe and the third generation owner of the store. It's been in my family for over a quarter of a century. So most of you either know who we are or you've been in to see us. Yes, and as a local business, um, you know, we're approaching the end of the year and 2020 has certainly been something else for, for everyone. Can you talk a little bit about this year from the perspective of your business? What are some of the biggest challenges that you've faced? Yeah, for sure. So um, obviously the biggest challenge for us was the two month lockdown where we were really forced to think on our toes and change the way that we do business. So while we did have an e-commerce site set up already, we didn't use it to the same capacity as we do today. So we really had to vamp up our skills and um, I really relied on um, Pebble Creative to help me through that because I'm not the most techie person. Um, That was a bit of a struggle for me, but we were just thankful to be able to um, use that service to still serve our customers. You you talked about it a little bit, but how has your business been able to adapt then and, and pivot for those ongoing restrictions that have been related to COVID throughout this year? So there's definitely been many, many adaptations at the different periods throughout this COVID situation. Um, Difficult one was reopening and making sure that I was providing my staff and our customers and myself with a safe environment. So right from the get go, we did things like everybody else, like sanitizer stations, making sure that we had socially distanced try on stations. So we went from having four to now only having two. We started masking back in August. So that's kind of been normal for us for a while now. We also have to quarantine anything that gets tried on because we can't really steam like some um, garments. So we have a quarantine room now where we put everything that gets tried on. Um, Yeah, so we, we think by doing all of those things and continuing with all those recommendations that we are able to provide a safe, place for people to shop and while we have had to limit the number of customers we have in store we have found that our customers have been so gracious in giving us time and waiting outside if we're busy with other customers at the time so we really appreciate that so it sounds like you guys have made a lot of of very positive changes in order to be able to still serve your clients through um, the pandemic and I think we all recognize that customers right now are often worried about shopping in person and doing so safely. So you've touched on some, but can, can you kind of give us an overview of the options that your business offers for clients who would prefer maybe not to shop in person or who are maybe concerned um, about safety precautions when they are going to shop in person? Yeah, absolutely. We do know that even with all the precautions we're taking and all the extra measures, Um, that we're going through that there are still customers that either don't want to or just can't come in. So through our e-commerce site, that's one way that people can still shop. And we also realize that shoes are hard to buy online. So we can do everything from um, some people have traced their foot and sent it into us and we will try our best to match that up with the right size for them. Um, we're able to let them know about different um, widths and try to walk them through the try on process. We've also been able and we've done this forever um, for the seniors in our community who aren't able to come out any time of year COVID or not. Um, we're always willing to give people you know, a few pairs of shoes, take them home and try um, and then see that way. And then we will just quarantine everything else that comes back. So we do try our best to make sure you can still get that that sit and fit experience that we really um, try to do at Swift Shoe, but safer. That's excellent. It sounds like that you guys have 
so many great things in place uh, to help make your, your customers feel comfortable. Um, and I think that that really leads to this next question. We often hear the term support local. Um, and of course, now that's more important than ever. So that being said, what does support local mean to you and to your business? Mm -hmm. So that's a great question, Lindsay, because we hear that term shop local, we see that term shop local, support, support local all the time. And sometimes we forget what that actually means. Um, and it means more than just um, keeping local shops. While that is super important because we have a little cameo there, we have uh, some amazing shops in Swift Current that we need to keep. So first and foremost, obviously, if we want to keep our shops, we need to support them. Um, second of all, it's more than just supporting the business and the business owner. I know for myself, I have six employees. So by my store being open, I'm also supporting those six people in jobs. And when you shop at those lo local shops, you're supporting those other people as well. So that's really, really important. Um, another important thing is that when we spend our money in Swift Current, it stays in Swift Current. And then those businesses that appreciate your business will turn around. Um, I know we all donate to um, so many different things, but I like donating to like kids minor sports and there's daycare fundraisers, small town community halls, curling bond spiels. So small businesses try to pay it back too. So in order for us to do that, um, we need to make sure we support those small businesses. At the end of the day, um, it is also the tax base for our city. So without small businesses and the taxes that they pay to the city, um, those taxes need to be recouped somewhere or the money can't be spent. So we need to support our local businesses to ensure that our city can move forward and invest in the things that they do now and in the future. Yeah, I think that's a really great summary of uh why supporting local is so important, especially right now. So we are wrapping up here, um, but before we do go, Amy, is there anything else that you'd like to share? Yeah, um, so I just wanted to say, although COVID and this year has a lot of negative connotation, um, it hasn't been all doom and gloom for us. We have seen so many people really making the extra effort to shop local. And I think for me, that's the silver lining is that people have really appreciated us and I'm sure many other small businesses and really went the extra mile to choose to shop local because that is a choice. And everybody has the choice now to shop local or anywhere across the world. So when you make that choice, know that myself and all my fellow business owners we truly, truly appreciate that you've made that choice, um, especially now, but always. So thank you guys once again for making that choice, for shopping local, for keeping your money in our community. And we hope that we will all be here to continue supporting you guys in the future as well. Excellent. That's a great way to wrap everything up. So thank you, Amy, for taking the time out of your day to chat with me. Uh, also, thanks everyone for watching. And continue to follow the City of Swift Current and Swift Current and District Chamber of Commerce on social media for more Talk Local Zoomcasts. We have another Zoomcast coming up on the next business day.